So guys, it happened once more. Don Jr. went out there in a desperate effort to defend his dad and also in a desperate effort to win his father's love. And I don't think it worked on either front. And of course, as per usual, the question remains, why does he go out like this, sounding drunk, sounding all of these sorts of things? Why does no one stop him? But the point is, he's trying to trot out the same tired old arguments in a desperate, futile effort to try and rationalize the paranoia and the exaggeration we've seen from his family and his movement about why the search on his dad was somehow this big, bad ordeal. Listen to this. Enjoy the fact that this is the Trump family pulling their hair out because they know daddy's going to prison and they might too. And then we'll come back and I'm going to tear this guy up limb from limb on this one. Yeah, well, listen, I, I think, you know, obviously you, you've seen all the details. I think the thing that a lot of people miss is, you know, when, when I read, you know, that they used the FBI's hostage rescue team, that's when you're like, oh, if you even thought maybe there was something here that isn't political, you realize that's the intimidation tactic. I mean, for those of you who are listening who don't understand, the, the hostage rescue team, the HRT, that's like the Delta Force. That's the Navy SEALs of federal law enforcement. I don't even know that they've used the HRT like – you know, on American soil. So for them to be, you know, executing essentially a search warrant, uh, it seems like uh, something they've never been used before. Uh, you know, a tactic designed simply to intimidate a political enemy. Uh, you know, that to me was what was, you know, really crazy. You're seeing all this stuff right now where they're, they're showing, they're leaking pictures selectively to the press of documents strewn on the floor that seem like they're, you know, staged documents to make this seem. I mean, this is... Uh, an absolute farce. It's absolutely disgusting what's going on. You you have uh, you know a the special master happens to be uh, Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer. Total coincidence. He's an Obama appointee, probably Trump hater. All just mag of the thousands of magistrates chosen, uh, I should say. Uh, you know, he happens to be the one guy that get. Like, does anyone believe in this much coincidence? Uh, does anyone believe who's been watching for the last five years that all of this stuff just magically happened this way and this is the process functioning flawlessly? Um, it's it's just ridiculous. So, you know, uh, it doesn't surprise me anymore. I guess I've gotten so accustomed uh, to this sort of stuff going on. But, you know, the FBI needs the HRT teams to raid Mar-a-Lago, even though they have documentation going back and forth that everyone's cooperating with one another. Uh, but, you know, the guys that are on the quote unquote FBI radar, you know, they magically shoot up schools or do whatever they're going to do because they check some sort of politically correct box. We can't actually uh, look at them. But, you know, we can persecute your grandmother because she's a conservative or uh, or your friend who happened to be within 500 miles of Washington, D.C. on January 6th. Uh, it, it's a dis it's a disgrace what's happened to the FBI, how politicized they become and how they've been weaponized. Uh, against conservatives. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know how much longer this nonsense can continue. You watch, you know, the press secretary, I guess it was yesterday, talking about how, you know, Trump voters are the greatest threat to democracy we've ever faced. You know, 75 million people are the greatest threat to democracy. Not so listen, we really have to make a couple things clear. This search was 100% by the book. Every step of the way, it was restrained. They did everything they could to get back the documents without a search, without a single agent having to go. They gave Trump opportunities going all the way back to last year. And as we know, documents were signed promising from Trump and his team that everything was given back and then they got credible info that it wasn't all given back proving that either Trump or his lawyers or both lied to the feds and of course at that point they're lying about hiding stolen secret classified documents of course they have to go in and get them and you see the other thing that Trump Jr. and Trump Sr. and everyone in their movement is trying to do which is take their personal criminal actions and suspicions and put them on the wider society this is something that Don Jr. has been doing since the night the raid happened where he said it's not really about my dad it's about you it's about you the regular american it's about your grandmother they're going to come after every single person that's a trump supporter that's a conservative that's a gop member they're coming after you when again guys that's such a bs argument because what the trumps are trying to do is use a general concern about police overreach to garner sympathy for their own criminal suspicions and activities but let's be really clear 
Every step of the way, I've been saying this, so have many of you. If this was anybody else but Trump, anybody else, even senators, governors, Congress people, if it was anybody else but Trump, let alone a regular working class person, whether they were a Republican or a Democrat, they would have been charged and locked up and arrested and convicted long ago. We know that. So every step of the way here, Don Jr. can get up in front of these big audiences, these big crowds and rant and whine and complain about how this is unfair to his family and conservatives. But all all I'm hearing is terror, terror that his dad's going to jail and that if anybody else in the family, because remember what Michael Cohen said yesterday, that the documents may also be in the kid's house, they're all afraid too. He can keep spinning, no one's buying.